What is up? Welcome to my channel where I'm building a Lamborghini Diablo from the ground up. It's not a real Lamborghini. It's definitely not a kit car. It's just American built. One of the most intriguing parts about a car is the story behind that vehicle and the history. Today, I'm going to be telling the story of how I acquired and got my Lamborghini Murcielago engine and a little bit about what car that came out of and that history because it really is two different histories there. There's my engine and the car it came out of. Once they were separated, they have two completely different stories, but yet connected. The Lamborghini Murcielago that it came out of is named Mercy Mayhem. It is currently owned by Brian Deegan, the professional motocross freestyle rider. He acquired that by winning the Freedom 500 race that Cletus McFarland put on. Cletus McFarland purchased that vehicle from Flip Flop Garage. And you can go to Flip Flop Garage, it has a YouTube channel, I'll link it in the description. It'll share a little bit about the history of that vehicle and why that vehicle is named Mercy Mayhem. It's not really my story to tell, it's not my car. I know I just did a bunch of name dropping, I'm not doing that on purpose, it's a little shameful, but that's where the car is at and that's how it got there. In my last video, I shared the story of building a chassis and getting the body for it. So now that I have a rolling chassis and a body, it's time to work on the drivetrain. As I alluded in my last video, I had uh, several different plans for my drivetrain. I initially bought a BMW 750i, which was going to made up to an Audi transaxle, make an adapter plate, beef up the transaxle. It's a solid setup. It's a reliable setup. You can daily drive it and it's proven it fits. I ended up wanting more power, so I ended up selling it. Kind of a funny little story. I ended up selling that car to a kid who knocked on my door. He goes, hey, is that your BMW out there? And I go, yes. He goes, will you sell that? I'm actually thinking about selling it. And he's like, man, dude, I want to buy that. Tupac got shot in that car. And I was like, well, Tupac didn't get shot in that car. He got shot in a car like that. Not that one. And uh, he goes, that's my favorite car, man. I want it. So we came to a price. He goes, I'll be back in five days with cash. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and sure enough, he came back in like five days. He knocks on my door. He's like, hey, dude, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm 20 bucks short. He's like, w will you take it, please? And he's like, literally almost like on his hands and knees begging for that car. And I told him, I said, like, it's fine, dude. It's yours. Uh, I don't care if you're 20 or $25 short. And so he hands me this wad of cash. I've never seen so many ones or $5 bills in my life. The sanitary condition of those bills were definitely in question. I uh, immediately took that to a, the bank, deposited it. Uh, cleansed my hands, disinfected them from whatever was on those bills. That story in itself of just a young kid having a passion for a car. And that's something that every car guy can relate to. It doesn't matter if it's a $300 or $1,000 car or, you know, or a Honda to a supercar to a hypercar. That passion and excitement for a certain vehicle for whatever it is. It's no different than a fisherman or a hunter. He's like, oh man, got a seven pound bass. And like, that doesn't excite me, but you watch them, they get excited over their bass fishing or, or whatever. And it's just that passion that people in the community can relate to no matter what level you're at. And so it was exciting for him, you know, and this is what's exciting for me, uh, building a car. Probably Lamborghini enthusiasts is just like, it's not real, you know, it's, it's not. Um, so I sold that, bought a, Mercedes V12, an M120, which is 400 horsepower, dual overhead cam. You can get a lot of power out of those. Pagani Zonda used that same engine block. The first Zonda that they ever produced was the same engine out of a Mercedes AMG, not even modified. Later on, AMG modified those, bored them out, getting 700 plus horsepower out of a naturally aspirated engine. Those things straight piped sound amazing. Got it, did some measurements, it really didn't fit. As I'm accumulating parts for my project, I came across a Lamborghini Diablo, complete shift gate and shifter. I contacted the person on eBay. I made an offer for it. He said, hey, you know, I'll sell that with you with a gearbox. I have a 98 Diablo gearbox, do you want it? And I, I told him, I said, dude, that's way outside of my budget. And he goes, 
I said, I will let it go for, you know, pretty cheap. He's like, there's guys that, you know, they want fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars for things. They'll sit on those for 10 years before they sell it. He's like, I just want to sell it, make a little bit of money and move on. And so we came to a price. It was within my budget and got a real Lamborghini Diablo gearbox. So that was pretty exciting. I have a real Lamborghini drivetrain piece. It was a five speed manual gated gearbox. And really just all the custom parts that I was gonna have to have made was just gonna get expensive. I really kind of started thinking, it's just like maybe I'll just go with an LS. It's much more simpler. It's solved. There's a reason why people do that. It did kind of seem a little boring to me. It's been done so many different times. Not that an LS is boring because they're, they're phenomenal. One of the best engines ever made. But I just really wanted a V12. And I was just on eBay one day. A gentleman had posted a Lamborghini Murcielago engine and gearbox for sale. And it had a caption that said, maybe one of you guys might want this in your kits. It's not much more than the price of an LS. And so I contacted him. It was only a long block. So I ended up looking into what it would cost to source out all the parts. It needed an intake, it needed the manifolds, alternator, starter, just all the components, wiring harness, ECUs. It was outrageous. You know, you're gonna spend $30,000 to try to source out all those parts and get them and the time and investment. And that's a headache. That's not even an option. But it got me thinking, what if I could get a complete engine? What's one cost? Came across two engines that were up for sale. The one I really wanted was actually in Australia. It only had 5,000 miles on it. I think it was like $32,000. Really was outside of my budget. At that point, I was done with international shipping. I didn't even want to deal with it. That was just such a headache last time. And there was another one that was in California. I contacted the gentleman who was selling it. I said, hey, the, the price that you have listed is that for the complete engine? He messaged back, he said, no, he said, that's just for the long block. And I was like, oh, okay. I said, well, how much for the complete engine? And he just said, I think the buy it now price is fair. And so I was just like, oh, okay. Contact him back and said, hey, this is what I'm doing. I want to use this for a project car. I was like, what can we do? I need an engine, I need a gearbox axles, ECUs, wiring harness. Basically, I want to be able to just hook it up. If I supply water, oil, and power, I can just turn a key and it works. A complete setup is really around fifty to $60,000. I like, what can you do? I told him, I said, hey, I have this Lamborghini Diablo gearbox. Can I trade that? That gearbox had a lot of value. I got some credit with it. We came to a number and a trade. Complete Lamborghini drivetrain within my budget. And so at this point, it just seemed too good to be true. I was kind of skeptical about this whole deal. He wanted a deposit on it. And I told him, I said, I'll give you $1,000. And he's like, Rick, he's like, no. You need to make like a $5,000 deposit. And again, I'm a little skeptical. I'm like, I don't want to give away like five grand here. I don't want to be cheated. I can process losing a thousand bucks, but five grand, that's a little harder. He said, you got to understand, you know, from my position, I was like, okay, I get it. So I think I put like $2,000 down. And so I was going to wire some money. He said, will you send me your ID so I can get your address and stuff and get you an invoice. And it was just, it was just kind of weird. Again, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking this is too good to be true. And he asks for my, my ID and he, uh, this is through text message. And he goes, are you MMA? question mark and the next one was like you ex-military i'm just like why does he want to know these questions this is a little odd i wasn't going to answer these questions i'll let him think whatever he could think i'm chris kyle's spotter for all i care so it's time to go pick up uh my engine I get a truck i get the money and this is the most cash i've ever had in my entire life in hand definitely not comfortable carrying that large sums of money I uh, got a little stupid little lock box with a cable on it. I don't know how to carry this much money. It's what you would put a down payment for a house. It took several years for me to save up this cash. And here I'm going to go spend it on a Lamborghini engine for my kit car. You know, it's kind of kind of crazy. I'm driving down there texting him saying, hey, I'm on my way. And he asks the question, he's like, are you alone? And uh, I'm like... This is just weird. Um, and uh, it was, <laughs> I was a little uncomfortable with it. And I'm like, I'm not answering that. 
Uh, you can, uh, it's just like, what do you mean am I alone? I was like, well, these guys gonna jump me when I get there or what? I ended up getting down there at midnight, uh, or actually about one o'clock. Got to the hotel, come over there by Magic Mountain. Well, it's a family area. I come in there and I have this gearbox, you know, in the back of my truck and I'm not gonna leave that in the back of the truck overnight. So I grab one of those carts, the luggage carts, and I take this crate and it's 250 pounds and I put it on there and I start pushing it into the hotel lobby. The receptionist isn't there and I'm like, gosh, man, this doesn't look good. Here comes this white guy in this family um, area and I got this crate. Who knows what's in it? This is just right after the the Las Vegas massacre. And I'm like trying to find somebody to say, hey dude, these are not guns. It's a transmission. I just don't want to leave it in the back of the truck. I'm pushing it around in the car through this hotel and I can't get it into the doorway. It's too wide. I take it off the car and I start rolling it, flipping it in there. And I'm like, gosh, man, I look like an idiot. It's one o'clock in the morning with this crate. It's completely, you know, hidden. It's heavy. It's like, I don't even know what people think. I'm trying to just, just like, hey, I don't got anything illegal going on. I wake up the next morning. I got to load the thing back up and roll it back out there. The same thing. I wasn't too nervous about having to take it out of there. Bringing it in was a little more suspicious than leaving. Contacted the person, um, said, hey, let's, uh, we'll meet up at such and such time. And again, I'm pretty nervous and I have a very sound mind. Uh, I'm not uh, paranoid or whatever, but I don't know what was going on. It's just kind of the mixture of spending this type of money and just kind of the little flags that of questions of who am I and who am I coming with? Am I MMA? Am I military? It gives me a specific time. Be here at this time. So again, I'm a little nervous and I, I, you know, I, I look at the clock and it says 911 you know, or 9-11. I'm like, oh man, that's not, is that a sign? <laughs> start, start thinking a little too much and I'm by myself. I walk out the door and it says, you know, big, big sign says, in case of emergency, call 911. And I'm like, oh, that's two, <laughs> you know, better not be three. It's just like one of those just crazy things that just goes through the mind at times. I go down to the location and I'm driving around. I was like, I don't see anything pull up to the address and it's a storefront and it's got all these pots and pans in it. I don't see anything that resembles, you know, Lamborghini parts or exotic car parts. And like, what the heck is going on? I was like, man, this is, this is getting even shadier. Uh, so they end up pulling up and it was uh, a father and son and I think the father's wife. This, this doesn't seem too bad. I'm not going to get jumped. I could take them. <laughs> they get out super cool, super nice, great people. And so, yeah, I was just like, okay, this is legit. My nerves could relax. I'm not going to get jumped. And it turns out really what happened was the kid sold his dad's engine to me and his dad was pissed. It's a father son business. And really what happened was the dad bought this engine years ago for a backup engine to his car. The Lamborghini Murcielago that it came out of was involved in a wreck and the car was sold separately. So he bought it for a backup engine. It sat for several years. The car was bought by somebody else and restored. So that is how the two got separated. But uh, again, so his dad was pissed. Um, and uh, you know, I'm counting out the money. He's smoking a cigarette. He's just like, <laughs> just, human and uh, and he looks at me he goes he's like you got us this time but you're gonna need more parts and we're gonna get you back and I was like touche <laughs> and uh, it was funny because I went there to go I was just like all right I went there with some extra cash I wanted to buy a whole bunch of more parts and that wasn't gonna happen you felt the tension between him and his son and uh, again his dad was super nice to me he had his wife make us you know, make me some special coffee and just like, I sit down, we'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a coffee together. This is really good. And he took the time, went and labeled all the parts for me, uh, labeled all the ends and where they went, did a walkthrough with me of how to hook everything up and connect everything and spent a lot of time with me and just was really helpful. And I'm very, very grateful for that. But again, it wasn't really the environment to start making more deals on stuff. I'm just like, you know, I'm just 
can take my winnings and leave. You know, kind of like going to the going to the casino. It's like, here's your winnings, get out of here. <laughs> and so I you know, ended up getting getting all the parts together and uh, getting loaded and everything up. And um, I asked the son, I said, hey, um, you got the the oil cooler tank? And uh, his dad looks at him and says, you gave him an oil cooler tank? And he's, he's, he's quiet about it, like, yeah. And he's like, those things are 800 bucks. He just walks, turns his head down and walks away. Ultimately, I have a gated Lamborghini Murcielago drivetrain. To me, that's just kind of the ultimate setup of having a manual Mercy and putting it into my favorite uh, Lamborghini, which is the Diablo 6.0. Thanks for watching.